Hello! Alright, so for those of you who do not know me, my name is Nicole Kazi Coleman and I am a Colonel Holy Fire Reiki Master. So this specific topic has been in my mind actually for about three and a half years because that's how old my daughter is and it's just taken me this long to get it together and share it on a video. So right now, things are heavy, mass consciously speaking. I feel that there's a lot of exhaustion out there, but also a lot of heaviness specifically for women in our womb area, right? So I invite you to share your own story below in the comment section here of YouTube. I invite you to share your story in Soul Support for the Heart Centered God and Goddess. I invite you to send me a private message or email and share your story. Whatever feels good to you, share it and let it out. Now, I'm going to talk about how my daughter specifically helped to open up my mediumship and psychic skills. This story does involve some loss first, so please turn off the video now if that is going to trigger you or make you feel a way that you're not comfortable with right now. You can return back whenever you feel ready to hear it. So, when I was 17, yeah, 17, with my now ex-husband at the time, we became pregnant and I lost that baby within about two-ish, two and a half-ish months. Um, so it was about eight and a half or 10 weeks long pregnant and hi spooky. Of course she's coming. I, at the time didn't really connect the dots. Um, I didn't really see anything spiritually speaking. It was a very painful process emotionally. Obviously I was only 17. Um, but what ended up happening a few years later, I didn't see Spooky too. If you're not a frequent watcher of my videos, um, this is Spooky. She's a sweet little black cat. Has one little, like, patch of white right there, like a little tuxedo. She has the most beautiful orange eyes, so her name's Spooky. She's our, our healer, our healer cat. We have another little kitty, and her name is Rose, and she is our, uh, young soul that is playful and a little uh, mischievous, we could say. So back to the story. When I was 22, that's when I had my first child. That was a quick stay spooky. That was when I had my first child at 22. That's Brayden. So when Brayden was born, I started to notice that there was another spirit hovering around. When I was a little girl, I used to be able to see spirits and it just kind of got lost over time. Um, I got busy at school and dancing and boys. So when I did see spirits, it was great, but mostly it just kind of like filtered out and I didn't really care about it anymore. I don't know if any of you can relate to that or not, but right around the time that I started having kids, I really wanted to start working on that. And lo and behold, I started seeing this spirit and this spirit was a little girl she really took on a huge resemblance to my son Brayden. So my son Brayden, um, his hair has since darkened. He now has dark, 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 dirty blonde hair, uh, ringlets, but he used to have blonde ringlets, even as a baby. He used to have like this one when he was like nine or 10 months old that formed right in front, like a little unicorn horn, <laughs> except instead of sticking up, it was just, a little ringlet that came down on his forehead. So anyways, I would notice him um, kind of just like playing and noticing this other spirit. This spirit looked exactly like him, but a little bit older. She had ringlets, um, longer obviously, not as long as my hair, but probably about her chin length. And she was about four or five years old. So that was interesting. Um, I tried to communicate, but didn't really get anywhere. Fast forward another two years, I had Emmett, which is our middle child. Emmett is much more aware spiritually. He can feel a lot more. He is definitely a crystal child, an indigo child, a rainbow child, whatever the correct term would be for who he is. He could see spirits and he would point them out to me until he was about three years old. 
And so this little girl that I kept seeing just kept growing up as time went by. And I kept seeing her crawl into bed with Emmett and I because I breastfed Emmett till he was about three and a half. And the only reason why we stopped is because I suddenly became pregnant. So all of this to lead up to the story of what exactly happened with Jojo and the pregnancy. So I start working with this um, psychic and mediumship coach because I really wanted to open up that side of me again. And I knew that I wanted it to be included in my energy healing business. I feel like you guys should have like a, a bag of popcorn right now or like a glass of wine if you drink wine or maybe some iced tea to listen to the rest of the story. <laughs> So I just decide, you know, I want that included in my business. So I start working with this coach and she's like, you know, that there's this spirit that she's a little girl and she's, she's like with you all the time. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I know I can't really like quite put my finger on it. I think it's the baby that I lost when I was 17, but I haven't really been able to communicate with her. So we decided to start communicating with her um, together so that she could kind of help me, my psychic coach, work through the barriers and directly communicate to this little spirit. This is also a side story. I think a lot of you know that I love everything Pleiadian. This was when I discovered that my soul originated from the Pleiades because when my, co uh, yeah, when my coach would lead me through these meditations and through these healings, I noticed that I would get myself into a starship. And for all you Trekkie fans out there, yeah, meditate in a starship. Take yourself anywhere you want to go. It's super fun. Anyways, I realized that I was going to, um, without even knowing anything about it, years later, I realized that that's what was happening. I was traveling up into the Pleiadian dimension, let's call it. And so in that Pleiadian dimension, I would get off my shuttle. I always need a shuttle. Sometimes I just go without the shuttle, but um, really I'm a, a sci-fi fan, so I love my starship. And so I would get off this shuttle into this beautiful planet and heal. Part of the healing was a dragon, which I know I've talked to a couple of you about, um, but the other part of the healing, so I'll leave that dragon story for a different day, but the other part of this healing was this girl and trying to figure out who she was, what she was here to teach me, what I was here to teach her, and how we could cohesively work together. So to make an extremely long story short, because I've already been chatting for eight minutes, which is not shocking, I realized that I had a lot of issues to heal with my own mother, and it just kept going back generational, generational, generational. So every single woman holds within them cells from their mother and cells from their grandmother, right? In your body. But not only that, we also have energy from ancestors like uh, in times infinity, okay? So we're holding on to a lot of energy. So there was a lot coming up that I needed to heal in regards to a mother-daughter relationship. And especially to be able to feel Maybe good enough and worthy enough is not really the exact terms that I want to use here, but there was an energy there and like a blockage there that I had to heal my own mother wounds in order to help her, my daughter. At the time, I thought my daughter was moving on into a different dimension. I no longer thought she would be with me because she just kind of disappeared one day after I had a really big aha healing moment about my own mother. And so I healed it, healed it, healed it, cleared it um, as much as I could. And then that daughter spirit just disappeared up in the Pleiades because that's where we would talk. And the day that she disappeared was rather odd. It was right there with my psychic coach and I thought, hmm, she must have done what she needed to come here to do. We thought she moved on. She completed her mission, right? So I hang up with my coach, drinking some water. I accidentally spill my water on my um, that little blue writing desk that I have in my studio. And I look down at the water <laughs> and it undeniably looks like a fetus. 
not even kidding. So I take a picture, send it to you, Amy, if you're watching this. And I just said, what do you think that looks like? Sure enough, she's like, it looks like a fetus. And I was like, it's just none of this is making sense. Of course, now in hindsight, I'm like, duh. But at the time, it didn't make any sense. Because what I haven't told you is that my ex-husband and I were going through a very nasty separation. And that's another reason why my womb did not feel safe or secure. And it's a big part of what I'm healing now in my womb is that heaviness from that period of my life. So it just was not, to me, the timing that I thought anything would ever happen. Just didn't click through, right? Fast forward about a month and um, I realized that I'm pregnant. <laughs> so as soon as I became pregnant, well, just there's no denying it, right? I told my midwife the story and I was like, listen, this is a little girl. Her name is going to be Josephina. We're going to call her Jojo or Joey for short or Joe. Sure enough, she called me about two months later. Well, not even two months later. It was really only about a month later because science these days, you can find out pretty quickly now what you're having a boy or a girl. So she called me. I missed the call a couple times. So she called me and I finally answered. I was like, it's a, she said, what do you think it is? And I said, it's a girl, isn't it? She said, yep, it is. You're right. And I remember giving my kids pink M&Ms. Actually, I don't think I had pink on hand. I only had like purple, so I just had to tell them it was pink. <laughs> and they were like, no, it's not mom. And I was like, just pretend it's a girl. And then they really like kind of understood what I was doing there. It was really cute, sweet, a side story. But that's when things really started to rev up. I have this baby in my womb, right? Jojo. And she is really starting at this time to help me see different perspectives from all of these people in my life. So not only clients, but my husband at the time, the woman he was dating at the time, um, all of my family members, so my mom, anybody at this point basically that I was interacting with on a regular basis. It, I want to say it was like having two brains in one, like, which makes sense because yeah, I was pregnant, but it was interesting because it was like, she was actually right here next to me, helping me see all of these different perspectives and helping me communicate to all of these different souls. With Reiki, you are taught that you can communicate with the soul but it's not a psychic or mediumship class. So those types of skills have to be developed in a different class. So that's what that psychic coach was for, right? So all of this was really starting to rev up and happen at the same time. And suddenly I found myself able to communicate with her on a daily basis. I was able to communicate, like I said before, with all of those other souls on a daily basis. And then my clients. What started happening, because this, this rarely happened, it did happen though sometimes, um, where a loved one would come through during a session and I would be able to communicate anything that they needed to tell the client at the time. That did happen sometimes, but it didn't happen like it does now. It was a little bit more work and it only happened rarely. So fast forward, I'm pregnant and my daughter just starts showing her face to a majority of my clients that I had at the time. And now these were clients that I had had for a long time, but also clients I had just seen that day and would tell me, your daughter showed me her face during our session. This is what she looks like. No surprise, uh, ringlets, <laughs> darker hair, some saw whiter hair, which makes sense now because Jojo has went through the full spectrum of all of the hair colors at three and a half. She bounces back and forth between, she really has had this dark color hair. Like when she was born, she had dark, Hair like mine and then it transitioned into white and then transitioned into like a dirty blonde and now we're just going back and forth between like dirty blonde and white hair so she showed these these women at the time there wasn't actually I don't think any men that came in but she showed all of these people her face she wanted them to know that she was there to also help heal them which I think is just a beautiful gift so fast forward I become, I think that I'm in labor. And so I have my midwife check me. I like home birth. So I was at home and she said, you're eight centimeters. And I was like, all right, great. Let's go. 
called my doula and she's like, you are not in labor, girl. And I was like, listen, I can feel like something is happening. And so I wanted to make sure that everybody was there because I have quick births and I did not want to do it by myself. Um, and neither did my husband at the time, clearly. So, and my husband and I had gotten back together, by the way, at this point. We'd gotten back together that summer. So I found out I was pregnant in January, February-ish time zone or time frame. Then we got to back, back together that summer and she was born in October. So I go into this deep meditative state because that is the best way to communicate to any spirit beings. If you are working on that, you have got to keep meditating. You've got to get comfortable with this and the space between and the quiet between and the chatter between. You have to be comfortable sitting in your own skin and just being present. 15 minutes, I'm still chatting. I'm gonna wrap this up in five minutes. So that day came where I thought that I would have her. Things started revving up. I started feeling my contractions more and more at a more regular basis. I felt like she was ready to come. I was in a very deep meditation with her and her and I returned to the Pleiades to where we had been frolicking about for so long. And what's really interesting is I felt something very odd come over me. And I could feel that it was fear wrapping around and enveloping us both. It was like a very black, heavy energy. Um, and at that point we had still been playing. When I say frolicking, like we're in white dresses, playing with flower crowns, like we're frolicking about, okay? And I reached for her to grab her and take her into this realm, into the earth realm for her to be born. And all of a sudden she just disappears again and everything is black. And at the time, my doula Becca and my husband were rubbing my back because I had uh, my face on a birthing pillow. I was on all fours and just kind of like, you know, rocking back and forth. And I will never forget that moment. That fear just completely enveloped everything. And I felt like I lost her again, to be honest with you. I knew that I didn't because technology and her heartbeat was fine. Nothing was, was wrong as far as that, but just spiritually speaking, it felt like a very big trigger to me. And also when you go through a traumatic experience like an affair, you're going to feel that type of loss and like that type of like betrayal in almost any situation like that, right? So it was a big one for me. And I remember trying to communicate for with her after that for about a week because I was already overdue. Overdue, it's a term that we use here. It's not accurate at all. And I couldn't communicate with her again. I was really frustrated. So I decided to go get acupuncture, to do all of these things, these spiritual things. My beautiful friend, um, Donna, who's a shaman, Shaman Donna, you all know her. I asked her to once again connect our hearts together and she's also a massage therapist so I was also like get her get the baby out get the baby out push all the pressure points like after you've connected our hearts I don't care what you do but like get the baby out <laughs> he's not comfortable walking around for a week at eight centimeters let me tell you so finally Jojo decides it's her time a week later and I remember in the middle of her birth um, I had had a very special blessing ceremony, by the way, and my doula, who happens to be one of my best friends, a very lucky woman, had led me through, well, the whole group through a meditation, and I could not find my happy spot now, fast forward during the birth, so I asked the doula, Becca, to go ahead and lead me through it again, because I was in a lot of pain, I couldn't find my happy spot, and I've had two kids by then, that was my third. And I tell you, I did not feel very much pain with either one of those kids before, except for Jojo. There was so much pain in my womb from what had happened with my marriage. There was so much pain in my womb from what had happened with my miscarriage with Jojo years ago. And all of that really came up for healing all at once. So another long story short, Becca kind of eased me, guided me through a little bit. The midwife, um, Emily, the birthing assistant, helped me to get through that moment and I could catch her 
and put her up in my arms. And I swear, as soon as she was born, she was smiling at me. And she looked exactly as how people had described her, exactly as how I had seen her. It was just, it was beautiful. So I share this story with you today to tell you that not only am I still working on healing my womb from that, from a Western standpoint, meaning a more medical, modern standpoint, but also from an Eastern standpoint. So I adore working with Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene. I think I've shown you guys my pictures before, but that's a part of my altar now because um, New Publix and Wildlife, their flowers, you know, if you were local, their flowers were like, it's not a good section. It's a very small flower section. <laughs> so I got these little mini roses. They're like spray roses, I think. Anyways, they're kind of fun though because they have red and white combined ones, which is great because Mother Mary's white, Mary Magdalene's red. So like I said, I'm still healing this years later. Mother Mary, of course, Mary Magdalene. And um, the opportunity came up to start doing womb breathing. And I recorded that and it's on YouTube. So feel free to uh, listen to that. It's about 10 minutes. And since I've already chatted, chatted, chatted this long, I don't want to do it live. I would rather you go watch it for 10 minutes when you're ready. But the point is Jojo really forced a energy. And well, you know how like something or someone is like kind of pestering you and they won't go away. It's like a fly almost. And like you keep <laughs> shoving it away and then it just keeps coming at you like harder and stronger. And you're like, Oh my God, you have no choice, but to just like dive deep down in right and do it. And so I feel like that is the opportunity that my daughter gave me in this lifetime the opportunity and the agreements that we had were for that miscarriage to happen. The opportunities and agreements that we agreed on were for her to come at a time when I probably most needed her, but was most unprepared for her. And so having all of this time and space that I personally needed to open up intuitively, mediumship wise and psychic wise is just really a part of my story. And that's what I needed to happen. So for those of you that are working on it, know that it doesn't happen overnight. I think all in all, it took probably about two years for it to really come to fruition. And in that two years, it was because I was going through a, a divorce, obviously, but I was also taking care of a very young baby and two other younger children. But the point is, no matter what, I returned to my meditation. I did it every single day. And I, of course, I have so many journals, you guys know, like they're everywhere. I've got them all in my office. I've got them all in my office at home, my bedroom, like my car, my purse, everywhere. Because you never know when something's gonna come up that you're going to want to release via your journal or when you're meditating and you want to write about it. So this story I'm sharing with you because I want you to be able to feel free to share your own stories of your own womb stories. Okay. So your own birthing stories, your own, whether it be birthing of human children or businesses or ideas, whatever it is, creative projects, share what you have birthed. Let's own our divine feminine energy. Let's celebrate that and how powerful we are and honor that within us. Jojo gave me that opportunity, more so like a pestering fly that would not stop coming for me. And that really forced me as well as my divorce, because when you hit rock bottom, that is a time, that is an opportunity for you to be the Phoenix, right? And rise from the ashes. So Jojo was that opportunity slash um, shove for me like a shove if we're gonna be honest it was like multiple shoves multiple shoves she presented that for me and I'm glad that I took it in this lifetime because it has been such a valuable healing tool not only helping others heal from birth trauma or fertility or healing wounds or being able to help others open up 
psychically and intuitively and mediumship wise. So it's a beautiful gift, but it is one that requires work. It is one that requires getting comfortable with yourself and the silence. It is one that requires a routine of getting in that meditative space. And if you know me, I'm a free spirit. The one thing that I make sure, there are multiple things I make sure I do every day. Brush my teeth, brush my hair, no, brush my hair. I don't brush my hair every day. Can you imagine brushing this? Uh-uh. Brush my teeth, wash my face, and meditate. Those are like my three non-negotiables every single day. Because when I have this vessel clear, my Reiki is stronger, my mediumship is stronger, everything is stronger. So I really encourage you go listen to that womb um, breathing meditation. It's under the Reiki infused meditations playlist, I believe. But also take the time today to really start thinking about how, if you don't already, how you can incorporate a meditative practice so that you can go travel astrally, so that you can go see your own Akashic records, so that you can go visit the Pleiades if you want to, so you can go take your starship anywhere you want to. But it goes deeper than that. You can also start healing those ancestral wounds. You can start healing your childhood. There's so many opportunities here for you to heal yourself and to also be vulnerable and get healing as well. I think it takes two. It takes you healing yourself, but it also takes you going to see me for Reiki or channeled messages or whatever it is, angel therapy, dragon therapy. It also takes going to go see Donna, a shaman for an illumination or a soul retrieval. It takes going to see Aspen of August Knox to help clear emotions and really start embodying the confidence that you have buried within you. You just have to work through those inner blockages that we've created, okay? All right, so happy Friday. I hope that you have enjoyed this. Um, I hope you've also enjoyed the background of my sweet little altar here. And I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Um, don't forget, reach out if you want and share your story. Uh, I'm really considering doing like a 30 minute distance womb healing. So let me know if that's something that you would be interested in, in the comments below, or you can always text me or email me. You know, that's also fine too. All right. Thanks guys. Bye.